Hello and welcome back. In today's short video, we're going to be looking at messages in ServiceNow client scripts and how we can use those to do things like dynamic language translations or perhaps even just make our lives easier in the future. So if we need to change messages, we don't need to make code changes. We can just make that as part of configuration. Okay, and thanks for joining. Um, before we get too far into it, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone that's subscribed so far. If you haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so. Smash the bell icon so you can get notified by whenever I upload new videos just like this one. Again, to help out with YouTube algorithms, uh, please hit the like button and share amongst your ServiceNow friends. Let's get into it. For today's example, we're going to use the incident table, which um, if you've been here before, you'll you'll know I use it quite a lot. But what we're going to do is we're going to create a client script that is going to be an on-change client script. If you um, haven't seen my video about client scripts, I've got a few. I'll, I'll put the links in the description. But we're going to say when the state changes, we're going to um, throw a message, okay, a, um, a form message. Quite simple, but I just want to demonstrate how it works. So we go to... Client script. And we create new. And like I said, it's going to be on on change and it's on the incident table. So let's go and do that. We'll call this take change demo. We've done a table. Desktop we'll use as the UI for now. Um, on change, the field that we're changing is, of course, state. Okay, everything else will remain the same. This field here, we're going to be playing with that in a second. So let's continue. Let's go to the script side. So at the minute, we've got our um, client script, and that's going to activate whenever we change the state field. So we want to add a message on the screen. So let's go ahead and do an info message. Very useful that dot tab, and then it shows you all the methods you can you can use. So I add info message. Now in here, what I'm just going to do for now is say state has been changed. We've all done this before, right? So we've added G form, add info message, state has been changed. We've all done that. So if we save this, go back to uh, incident. And if we change the state, it says state has been changed. Yeah, we've all done that. Of course, it's, you know, it's, it, it's always there. It's, it's whenever we change the state. State has been changed. But we've achieved it. So what's wrong with that? Why, why, why am I saying let's use messages? Well, I suppose the first thing I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying there's things that we can do to improve ourselves or improve the administration of our platform. So let's take another look. So if we look at the script that we've just wrote and line six with our messaging, what happens if in six months time someone says, well, you know, I'd like you to change that text. You know, I'm, I'm not sure quite what they <laughs> what they change it to. It's quite obvious. But what happens if someone did ask that to be changed? We'd need to come in and change it here, right? We'd need to go um, and change the text. Date has been changed again. Okay. So that's a, a code change which we'd need to do via an update set or via an app push it through change control etc etc okay and there's an element of risk that can be um that, that we can see there because we're doing a code change and things might have changed this script may be quite large now there might be someone else working on this script okay there's multiple reasons why this would be a risk the other thing is is what happens if this isn't just um, an English speaking instance. What happens if there's other people that are logged in from um, perhaps 
uh, Spain or France or um, anywhere where where people speak a different language or they're, they're expecting a different language to be on screen, they would just see state has been changed. Well, in this case, state would be changed again. There's no translation there. There's no localization for, um, for the user. So in order to, to fix those, what we would do is we would create an entry in the messages table. This is what I'm going to do. We're going to go to the CSUI message table and we're going to create an entry. So we're going to create a key and we're just going to call it test state message. And the message we're going to add is state. In fact, I'm going to put it capital so it's obvious. State has changed. And I'm going to leave it like that for now. So I'm just going to point out, so this is the key. This is the unique um, the unique key for this message. This is how we identify or we, we call on this message. And this is what is going to be shown on screen, what's in this message field. So we identify it based on this, but that's the result we're going to get back. But if you look here, you can see the language. So if we had multiple records with the same key but different languages, it would look at the the local language of whoever's used it, um, logged in, and it would present back the message um, that is against that language. Okay, so in this case, my language is English. It would present um, this one. If it was Spanish and I had uh, uh, the Spanish equivalent, it would present that one. Therefore, it's kind of dy dynamic translation for us. Um, the other benefit here is even if we didn't do anything with languages. The other benefit here is, isn't this so much cleaner to administer our messages on one table? You know, that state change message or this state has changed message could be applied to many, many, many tables, right? Or many, many scripts. But if you hard code it like I did in the first instance, we'd have to change. If someone wanted to change, we'd have to change every script. If we referenced this message table, we don't need to change this one record, right? So going forward, this makes our lives a lot easier. Again, I'm just giving you information that helps you make informed decisions. And I'm not saying this is the right way every time, but it's always good to know this information so you, you at least got all the information before you decide which direction to go in. So let's save this. And we'll go back to uh, client script. OK, so now on the client script, we need to apply what we've just on the messages um, and reference that message in the client script. So what we do there is we use this messages field ok, that we've probably really seen before and just completely ignored because we're so fast at getting down to the script area. But what we do here is we use the key. Um, remember that that field that I that I mentioned with the dots in? We use the key which was, this was our key, test.state.message, and the message was in capitals. I can't remember what it was, but it was in capitals. But we use the messages, uh, we, we use the key, sorry, and we add that there. Now, what that does is that'll load that message when the form loads. That won't load it onto screen, but it'll load it kind of um, in cache, in the background, right, for us then to consume from the client side. Remember, the client script is client side. So it's already loaded there for us to access. By doing this in the messages field, it loaded it so we don't need to make another server, another round trip to the server to get that message. OK, so it's it's bettering the performance of our system as well. OK, so just just worth bearing in mind. So now we've put that in messages. Do we think that's going to work? Well, no, because line six is still saying state has been changed. Right. So what happens if we were to do that? Well, that might be the not obvious thing, but people might think, well, that seems straightforward. Um, but no, that again is just a string. It's just going to output because we know that's a string. It's just going to output test.state.message. It's not going to be dynamic enough to know what the message was on that messages table. OK, so what we actually need to do is use something called. Let's just remove this so it's simpler to see. We still use um, add info message, but you use something called get message, which 
is a service now method. We open up some parentheses and it takes in um, a parameter. Okay, and that parameter being a key. Okay, so get message is a service now standard method that we can use, which accepts one parameter. Um, there is a caveat to that. It does only accept one parameter, um, but watch for another video. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a bit more into this. But it accepts one parameter, which is the message key of that entry we've just added. Um, and the return will be the message itself. Okay. Again, I'll, I'll put a um, link in the description for the product documentation if I can dig it out. So if we save this, and then we navigate back to our incident, let it just be any incident, can't it? And now when we change the state, we have our capitals state has changed. Okay, but you see what we've done there? We've created a message entry. We've stopped ourselves from hard coding on a client script, and we've given ourselves scope that in six, 12 months time, if, I don't know, the instance we're working on, someone says, hey, we, we're we now pushing this out to, um, I don't know, Brazil or um, Sweden, and we need the translations in there, it's going to be a lot easier than having to sift through script and change them. So my advice would be to start using this sooner or, or this method sooner uh, rather than later. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, again, if you've already subscribed, massive thanks. Um, if you haven't yet, please consider doing so. Give it a thumbs up, smash the bell icon, all that YouTube stuff. Um, until next time, stay safe, everyone.